Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine and today we're talking about the B650E Aorus Elite X AX ICE motherboard. So this is a low to mid range board from Gigabyte. However, I do think it's one of the most stunning boards this side of 300 US dollars. It sells for 280 on Amazon and here locally at Woodware, you're probably going to get it for around 5,800 or so. For that, you get a white PCB with matching heat sinks and components, making for one of the best looking color schemes on any board to date. Not all parts are in white, however. The headers, the two PCIe slots at the edge of the board, and the dim slots are in black. At the back of the board, however, you do get a light gray or off-white color scheme with some ORS graphics. It's a notable attention to detail on Gigabyte's part, especially for an area that won't be visible in most cases. As is, the ICE board could be the most attractive Gigabyte AMD powered board ever. Well done to the designers and the engineers involved in such an exceptional job. The board itself has the standard complement of headers and connectors. There is no power, clear CMOS reset, but in lieu of all of that, you do get a single multifunction button which can be configured in the BIOS. In addition, you get a four light system which denotes the post process instead of the postcode LED. Moving on to the rear I.O., we have the standard complement of inputs and outputs, of course. We have analog audio ports, two 10 gigabit USB ports, one 2.5G LAN port, four 5 gigabit USB ports, an HDMI port, and the remaining USB ports are 2.0. Interesting as well on this board is that there's an additional HDMI port next to the 24 pin connector. This is used for the sensor panel link or other compatible HDMI devices. Storage wise, we have three M.2 sockets. The top is Gen 5 capable, while the bottom two are Gen 4. As always, I appreciate the Easy Latch Plus system where I need no screws or screwdrivers to install any M.2 drive. Power is via a 6 plus 6 parallel system or a 12 plus 2 system as stated in the documentation and website. It utilizes 60 amp power stages, not the most robust from Gigabyte, but adequate for the price point and likely use case. The board, as expected, makes use of a six layer PCB. It features a daisy chain memory trace layout, which should help with high speed memory. According to Gigabyte, DDR5-8000 is possible, and I can confirm this is the case because I did that with my Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPU. The UEFI is Gigabyte's newest iteration, meaning it's the best they've ever had. Smooth mouse movements, menu transitions are great, relatively simple layout, and an interesting host of features, including a built-in temperature regulated performance level going from 90, 80, and 70 with various levels in between. If you prefer to use a dark theme for your visuals on this board, I'm afraid you will not be happy with this one as there's no way to change the color scheme or invert it from the all white to something else. But if you don't mind it, it is actually one of the best looking UEFIs on the market and it does match the board's color scheme. So there is something to be said about that. All that aside, however, we finally get to the performance aspect of the board. Right now, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPU and G-Scale Trident Z5 RGB memory. If you want more performance data on the board, it was covered already in the previous Ryzen 5 8600G review. So, First up, we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. Notable differences between DDR5-6400XMP and DDR5-8000. However, the difference is not as large as one would have expected, especially when you're coming from an Intel system like I am. Next, we have 3 dmark Time Spy and Fire Strike. The reason I picked these two is because they are whole CPU bound and thus sensitive to DRAM changes. 1000 points more in Fire Strike and just over 100 points more in Time Spy to the DDR5-8000 configuration. Hitman is the next test and benchmark. Here we see a large difference and possibly the largest difference there is between these two configurations. I mean, you can see that the numbers are ridiculously high by default, but if you add even more DRAM OC, they get even larger. So it's always good to see such scaling with just something as simple as DRAM OC. Metro Exodus, on the other hand, shows little scaling with DRAM OC. It's there, but it's very insignificant and definitely something you will not notice, which is very much unlike Cyberpunk, which actually surprised me. Going to DDR5-8000 increases the 1% lows by some margin. Good performance either way, but even better with the DRAM OC. Lastly, I tested Forza Horizon 5. 
Here the average frame rates actually didn't do much at all but there was a good 15 fps jump in the 1% lows so at least you get that. Overall nothing out of the ordinary here. Using the combination of PBO and DRAM OC however you can easily get even better performance from what is already the fastest gaming CPU money can buy. So with all that said I have nothing negative to say about the tuning capabilities and performance of this motherboard. It's stable, reliable and delivers repeatable performance. I like that extracting even additional performance from it is easy as I said before because you have profiles that allow you to do that. For the price, the looks, performance and feature set, the B650E Aorus Elite X AX Ice is a fantastic board. My favorite AM5 board to date remains the B650E Aorus Master, but this one nearly 4000 Rand cheaper can match it where it counts and for the most part I think it actually beats it in other areas. That said, let me know what you guys like, dislike or in general just think about the Elite X AX Ice board. Until the next time, share, like and subscribe if you haven't. Take care of yourselves and peace.